Number one, you were called before you could answer. You were called before you could even respond. He called you. Oh, think about that. You might be struggling with your worth today. You might be thinking, why am I? Well, I'm not good enough. I'm, what's the point of me being here? What's God called you before you could even respond to him. Number two, you didn't call God, he called you. Hello everybody, welcome to The Breakdown. This is where we break down the message from Sunday, what we got from it, how God spoke to us through it. Check it out. <laughs> hey guys welcome to uh season two episode one of the breakdown the message yesterday has been retitled so it was going to be called trapped in the calling um but the way the meeting went yesterday which we can talk about in a minute uh, meant that we i kind of had to cut it in half so we changed it to answer the call and we're going to do trapped in the call in next week. Um, yeah, so uh, before we get into the message, obviously part of the reason why um, the sermon didn't get completely shared is because um, God moved. And we saw God move in the meeting and it's something really big for us and as a church that we make space for the Holy Spirit. Um, Anne stepped out and shared um, something that God was doing with her shared that and then called forward for a response and people responded yeah. which is really cool to do with darkness really and and allowing that to be uh the authority that we have to overcome it yeah. and knowing that and then yeah. stepping into that which is really important so it's great to see people respond yeah. um something yeah something we feel is important as a church yeah and why we why we see god move definitely god really held that moment yeah so, and, and we've been talking quite a bit about making space for the Lord. Yeah. And yeah. that was so powerful. Just, just recognizing that God wanted to do some work in some people. And like you said, there was a response. Yeah. People came up and received prayer and people were set free. So. Yeah. And you know, we talk about it like it's separate from the message, but really, if you think about it in hindsight, maybe, yes. maybe at the time we might not have seen the connection, but in hindsight now, I think about a lot of, there are things that I had to come out of agreement with, yeah. uh, with the enemy that yeah. I didn't realize I had, I had agreed yeah. to those lies of the enemy. And then realizing that as soon as I have renounced that, it's like it opens the way for God to then speak very clearly to you yeah. about who you really are. because. Yeah. Just because you've now renounced what you used to be, yeah. it's left a vacuum in it. And so God yeah. has to fill that with, yeah. Yeah. with who you really are, which is yeah. why I think, you know, at the beginning of the message, yeah. you started off with, I think it was Jeremiah 1 verse 5, which talks about before you were ever formed, yeah. I knew you. It's yeah. like, so to me, it just, obviously, other than the fact that I had been talking to Sue about yeah. the same verse the, yes. before the service started, but... For me, it was significant because it was like, now that I've renounced those lies that I had, agree I had agreed to, that I thought this was me, yeah. right, that were so downgrading about mm -hmm. who I really am, mm -hmm. I have to find out who the new me is. Yeah. And why not start to the very beginning of like, before God knew me, yes. before I was formed, yes. God really knew me. So I actually do need to go back to God. Yes to yeah. replace that so yeah. to me it was they, they were, were both connected god, god, god as he always does yeah yeah it's puts amazing. a theme no, through I it doesn't that. it i never yeah. would have put those yeah. two yeah. things together yeah. but he did yeah, <laughs> yeah. yes really absolutely that's so cool yeah. and jesus is at the heart of everything yeah. you know bringing us back into that relationship with god okay. that we were made for relationship yeah. and, and, and i guess it, I, actually just thinking about the message yeah. in alignment with what God did that day, it's like, it's the same process and the same, same, same pattern in it of how do we know, how could we possibly know what, 
God wants mm. to do and what and who he's talking to and what's going on in someone's life. So mm. it's that same thing. So it's quite interesting that even though, even though kind of we went through this process of having space and letting God move, it also, the funny thing was the message then came afterwards, which was talking about calling and, and which we'll go into in a bit, but like, but also how that mindset of allowing God to have that space and to move is got to be greater than your own agenda or mindset because you don't know what's going on in someone's life. Yeah. You don't know what's going on in the room. You don't really know what's happening. I don't know what, even know what's happening in the back row. Like you can't see everything that's happening. So if God's moving in someone's life and we're being obedient, then yeah, like so it's so key. So it's gave the kind of almost the picture of how it should look anyway, before we even got the message yeah. where we started to talk a bit about that more. Cause we, cause the whole, everyone who was there yesterday knew that there was going to be a dedication. Yeah. Um, there was potentially going to be some baptisms, although those particular people didn't turn up yesterday. Um, but we had the pool filled and ready, which yeah. again is just being ready for what yeah. God wants yeah. to do. And so many occasions where we've just been ready, God then moves into that. Yeah. And so that's just having the heart of yeah. making the space for God to do something and for us to put down our agenda yeah. for God's agenda. And um, so that's true of any group of people that love Jesus. Yeah. You know, whether, whether you're an established church and in a church building like this one, um, or whether you're just a few people meeting in somebody's house um, or we're just meeting in the park to pray, having that readiness to just go, okay, well, God is dynamic. And if I really have this relationship with him and I'm yeah. recognizing his prompting of the Holy Spirit to do something, yeah. uh, are we collectively ready to respond? Because yeah. as an individual, you need to be ready. Yeah. But that's an, a challenge in itself. Yeah, yeah. We've all got to learn that. Yeah. But as a, as a group, right. whatever that group looks like, and no matter what traditions there are, yeah. or expectations, yeah. culture, just to go, oh, okay, let's just work with God in this. Because he so surprises us every time yeah. when we're prepared to just respond yeah. to him in that way. You can see how that's difficult to do, right? Yeah. I mean, in a, in, a, in a space where it's a group of people, like you're bound to have different mm. visions, different ulterior motives, and. And it's hard enough to get out of the way when you're in, in as an individual to obey God, but as a group of people, like I think you mentioned quite a lot of those barriers that can come up sometimes mm, of yeah. leaving yeah. room for God. Like I can see how it would it would be difficult yeah. to to get out of the way and yeah. in, in that way. But but I do think that as children of God, we've almost been given like a I, I, I don't know the best way of describing it, but, but it's like you're given one spirit and one Lord that everybody ought to bow down to, yeah. which means that that, that one, yeah, the yeah. unity should come seg like I, so naturally. I think I look at it like this. So if I'm putting on my Sunday hat or whatever, like I think it's, it's about stripping everything. So you've got like layers and layers and layers of stuff you know, Sunday and the layers that go with it. And then you've got what your layer, then everyone else has got their layers and, and all these things are there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, I think what I kind of start to see now, what I've learned to look at over the years now is that strip away all the layers until nothing's left, but mm. the thing that God wanted to do. Yeah. And that, and that means like you've got to let God keep peeling it back and keep yeah. So, and you've got to assess each layer. Like, is this your layer, God? Mm, no, I don't think so. And you yeah, go, right. and obviously everyone's meant to do that with themselves, yeah. which is the one thing that, you know, you can't control. People have got to do that themselves. They've yeah. got to peel back their own layers and get out of the way. Yeah. But for leading a meeting, to me, I just think, look at it from God's point, perspective. Yeah. What's his heart? His heart is, let's say, that person in the back row that's walked in for the first time that's seeking. That's his heart. His heart is how do I want that person to hear whatever I want them to hear. I want them to experience whatever I want them to experience. So when you look at it from God's point of view and you look at people from God's point of view rather than, than from yours, then you could think, okay, God, if it's all about that person, then we'll stop everything. We'll change everything. Yeah. Not because we know that that's specifically the case, but we just know God's saying yeah. change direction. Yeah. So you, you, you strip everything back and you just, 
And then if all that's left is this one person that God wanted to reach that day, it's good, it's yeah. fine. Now, if your ego is in the way, then it's like, no, 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 it's like there's 150, 60 people here. Yeah. Like, you've got to please every single one of them, like all this kind of stuff. But the truth is like, no, you've got to please God. Amen. And if you're pleasing God, even though 150 people, 60 people, whatever it is we've got now, can be impacted by the Holy Spirit and everyone can enjoy what God is doing, it could be that the, the, the plan of God for that day is just this one soul, this one life that needed specific things. Like when Anne shared yesterday, who's to say that that didn't set someone free because it was just about that person. Everything else that came after it, maybe it was irrelevant. It doesn't really matter. God was like, I'm out. You know, you don't know. Like, it doesn't matter. So I could come and preach and share and we can sing some more songs or whatever. But God can be like, no, what I needed to happen today has happened. It's done. And that doesn't mean that he's not going to do more stuff. It just... We've got to be comfortable enough to say, oh, that's it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's okay. And We're I cool, think, you know. And that's, that's a really big part of um, working with, you know, that passage of, of leaving the 99 and going after the one. Yeah. So, so if a group of believers can get that to the heart of their culture, of just being ready to, oh, it's not all about what our own expectations are, but it's just about, oh, we can shift everything just so God can, can meet yeah. that one person. And I think just listening to kind of both you chatting there, I was, I was thinking, well, there's a lot of trust issues that we almost have to get over. <laughs> yeah. um, trusting God, obviously, yeah. trusting other people yeah. that they know uh, they are in relationship with God yeah. to be able wow. to lead yeah. and, and so trust true. the Holy Spirit. Yeah. There's a lot of fear about misinterpretation of the Holy Spirit, rightfully so, yeah. because it can be manipulated and people can be manipulated. But there's also, do we trust ourselves? Do we trust ourselves to listen to God yeah. effectively? Um, and do we, you know, how much do we really trust God? Which is why when you go on the journey of remo dealing with all of those layers so that you're fully stripped back, th the most effective way to really do that is to 100% trust God, which requires 100% surrender mm. to God, allowing him to do the work in each of those layers and that, oh, I know, Lord God, that you know what you're doing and that you've got a good heart, Lord, and that you've got plans and purposes that you want to do. So when we surrender, it, it starts to cut through a lot of the obstacles and it puts everything into God's hands. Yeah. And then you realise, oh, once God's got this, he actually starts moving and doing stuff he couldn't do before. Yeah. Which is, I think, why we realise, oh, this is so precious that we, that we do church this way. Um, you know, and allow him to have the space to yeah. do things that he wouldn't otherwise have been able to do. And that's the thing. So there's no formula. There's no way of doing it. Yeah. It's a lot harder to back yourself up in that. Mm -hmm. And it is 100% reliant on your personal relationship with God, particularly if you're leading it. Because if you're, if you're not investing in that, it's limiting. You're limiting what God can do. Which is why it's easier for a pastor, a minister, a leader, deacons, oh, leaders yeah. to, to just be in control mm -hmm. and have a limited relationship with God. Because when we go deeper with the relationship with God, it means that we, we are surrendering more of us. We're getting, we're getting rid of some baggage. We're letting God into areas that are ugly and dark because yeah. that's what God requires of us. So as any leader has if they really want to go on a journey with god properly they will have to be consistently working on that with god and he will he's not like beating us down but he's whenever it's time he'll say look we're going to deal with this yeah. and and if as when leaders of churches are not immune or exempt from 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 this scrutiny from god and this examination from god so it's easier to just look like you've got it all together rather than to say actually i'm working through stuff with god I'm, I'm anointed to do this role, but I'm, I'm also, I'm also uh, just as vulnerable as everyone else. And I got to work through things with God myself. Mm. And, and if, if you think the persona that you've got to show is that I've got it all together, I'm a pastor, I've got it all together, I need to show that I've got all the right answers, I need to have all the answers. The problem with that is that, is that it, will, it will cause you to create a, a system that you can control. And and I think then and I think then we end up in a place where, yeah, then you don't reach that no, one never, because yeah. your system doesn't think doesn't about that. It's not thinking yeah. about that person. 
yeah. is thinking about and maintaining the image. Yeah, and and the image and pleasing the the majority. And I think and I think that's always going to be a challenge, isn't it? Because the more God does, then the more you're going to feel like all oh, you need to kind of understand what's happening yeah. and try and put a bracket around that yeah. and try and box it up somehow. And we we talk about this quite a lot, you know, about okay, God is moving, but then but let's not second guess God. And let's make sure that every single day we're surrendered to what he wants to do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's not easy to do that. No. <laughs> it's incredibly difficult to do that. In fact, we were talking about earlier how it's really hard. It's like one of the hardest things. Yeah. The to hardest really thing do. to do is to, to be obedient to God. It's the hardest thing in life to be, is to do. It's not, it, it's like people will talk as if it's like, oh, that's the easy thing to do. That's the hardest thing to do. Because well, you just, keep getting tested. Just be holy, just, just do what God yeah. is saying. It's like, like my flesh. My mind, my, my, like, literally, I have to wrestle. So, like, so yeah. it, the, the easier thing for me to do is do what my, what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. so the spirit, when it, when the Holy Spirit comes in and makes you alive, you're now in conflict forever. And you're, and you're in rest, a wrestling match between your spirit and your flesh all the time. So to be obedient to God, to honor God with your life, to, to, to run something or lead something in the name of Jesus is to lay down your life and and it means then that as you lay down in, lay lay down your life you are surrendering what you want to do yeah. and you want to do what he wants to do what he wants you to do which is not easy because you want to do this whether whether it's sinful or just like what you want to do it doesn't have to be dark it doesn't have to be like a list of the sins in the bible it can just be i just want to do this like i just want to do this thing like that's what i'm comfortable with that's what i like and god's like but i want you to do this are you going to be obedient to me because this is this is what so and that's actually a little foretaste for the message next week which is trapped in your calling because that's what it look that's what it is to be called by god and i'm not talking about the calling of your life to be called by God into a relationship with God yes. means that actually, and if no one, people could sit there and say, I don't feel trapped. But the reality of it is, is that most people at different times of their faith will feel trapped because even though, even though it's a free gift and even though it's, it's eternal life and even, even though it's like Jesus has done it all for you, it's still like you are making a decision that that was to to accept jesus into your life but you're answering his call yeah. so it's like which is part it'll be in next week's but it's oh, like it's almost like it's but it's almost like no hang on a minute you called me i didn't call you it can yeah. be the other way around yeah. so when we say when i said in the, the message yesterday god called you you don't call him yeah. we we can automatically we can flip that on god and say you called me i didn't want to do this <laughs> I didn't want to be here. I didn't want to. When we're in our bad moments, we can feel trapped. When we're in our actual calling, you know, when we're doing the things that God's telling us to do, we can be like, God, you gave me this assignment and I don't know how to work it. And I don't know how to, why did you give it to me? Like, I'm, there's better people out there. There's all these things like, that's what being trapped in your calling looks like because cause we're given something that wasn't, wasn't, we didn't ask for. Well, I think it's- Probably didn't it's, understand it either. No. <laughs> I think it's, our, it's the human part of us is like, Oh, this feels really uncomfortable, God. You know, this is really tricky. We get we get tested, we get challenged, and that's obviously part of the refinement yeah. that has to happen during the sanctification part of being a Christian. But it's genuinely difficult. It's really hard. But at the heart of everything, we know that when we when we are surrendered, God will lead us through those things. Yeah. So um, it has to come back to fixing those eyes on Jesus. Yeah. Um, and, and allowing him to but make the thing is, I think, I think the thing is, is like, uh, that's true. But the thing is, is that you look at all the characters in the Bible, right? Look at Elijah. Elijah literally got set up in a chariot to heaven. Mm, yeah. The guy in the midst, I would say at the peak of his ministry, if you want to call it something, mm. ran away and cried. Yeah. And he said, God, why? God, yeah. Why am I here? Why have you yeah. given this to me? So we have to be honest with ourselves that even though the answer is yeah, God, so no, no. even though the answer is Jesus, yeah. even though the answer is get to his feet, even though the answer is trust in him with all your heart, like even though that's the answer, we have to be honest with ourselves and say, I feel trapped at times, at times. in my relationship with God, not because, not because he's trapped me, yeah. but because 
my flesh, my mind, my the enemy, whatever you want to call it, the circumstances is getting the better of me. And even at your peak, like with Elijah in that moment, he then just crumbled. And I think we got to realize, like, if we're not attentive to God and we're not able to see that how to get to him, even in those moments, like I love Elijah's story because it says God goes with him and he leads him to the cave like so god's like okay we're gonna go here so like it's that understanding that he doesn't leave you but we kind of we kind of like feel angry at god because you're like well if i was if it was really working god why is jezebel got this power over me now like that's not right and god's like yeah hang on a minute you you've got your mind your mind's gone weird you've, you've started to think different so we get trapped in the assignments that god's caused us to do and we i think we feel we flip out at God more than anything else because we're almost like, I didn't ask for this. I didn't want this assignment in the first place. I was happy working in the cinema. I was, I was an architect. I was doing what I, I was like, and I was, I was, and I had money and I, and, and I was, I was on holiday and I was doing like all these things. And now I'm in this life where I'm surrendered to God. And, and, and even though we, we know all the benefits and all the great things that come with that, you get these moments where we feel trapped. Yeah, this is a precursor for next week, but <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we're not even talking about this week's message. This week's message. But I like that you've even said this because I was not long. No, let me not lie. Let me let me say a couple of days ago, uh, <laughs> I had a bit of a rant that sounded very very much like what you just did. Yeah. Um, well, exactly yeah. the same on thing. Saturday. <laughs> but yeah. Saturday. I know. When you totally amazing. stormed it in the studio. Oh, but that's not how I Was that before felt. or after? It, yeah. You had the, it was, had the It's problem. all during. That's the weird thing oh, about bless this. Bless you, Vara. This is the you amazing thing. It but is it's, because it's the, the moment, honesty that we have to have with that's these what I'm things. We don't, yeah. we don't have so instead of going like, like oh, no, we're, we're not trapped. It's like you are. And it's okay to say that. It feels like it's just It's just. And you know, let me Work tell it you why. God. Let me tell you why. Even being in the amazing moment of seeing the choir in the studio, see, yeah. even in the middle of that, the reason why I still could rant at the peak, yeah. Yeah. because yes. again, also yes. Elijah had a peak, and yeah. that moment you were talking about was right after the yeah. peak. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's almost like the peak almost doesn't matter because yeah. when you're in it, you don't always see the reason why. Yeah this is happening to me yeah. like what's the point of this where am i going where does the, mm. you know because our, like we're limited in what in the future that we can yeah, yeah, see yeah. and whether yeah. we're actually being effective yeah. in this calling you calling me to yeah. like if i'm laying down all these things that my yeah. flesh wants yeah. you almost kind of want to i want to see what want what's worth of it more, yeah, like absolutely. what is what am, see the worth is of it worth yeah like Okay, I've laid down my life. Is what I'm getting equivalent to <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. or uh, I think that's <laughs> just my brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brain yeah, is yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah. We, I I there's to, not one like, person that doesn't go through sense. this. Like, yeah, make yeah. it make sense. You know, so there's that. But then also, I was, I was thinking a lot about what you said yesterday. Oh, when you started talking about lukewarmness. So one of the things, I think this was in the second, the second, um, bit was you'd talked about God calls us and yeah, yeah that you said from Jeremiah the yeah. Yeah, the yeah the second one was you didn't call God he called you it's almost the same thing but very slightly different yeah. and you said you said this it was and it you said it in passing so quickly that I was just like oh I wish you'd like elaborated yeah. but you were talking about how when you start downplaying who Jesus is you you read from oh, yeah, yeah. Revelations 3 yeah. talking about yeah. the church in Laodicea yeah, yeah. right and and that how and rightly so we've always talked about Laodiceans as like uh, the worst of the worst scum of the scum. Yeah. 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 yeah, you don't want to be that church, yeah. Yeah. right? Any but that one, yeah. right? And, yeah. and yet the weird thing is we all pass through Laodicea, like like every single one of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, we've been there. <laughs> we've all been there. Yeah. You know, but you said that you said that usually you end up at lukewarmness not because you've You've made it a goal, but you downplayed who Jesus really you lowered is. him. Yeah. And when you lower him, you automatically end yeah. at lukewarmness. Well, he's it's not like it's, it's compromising. Yeah. You've, you've, it's the, he's it's, no longer king and lord. It's where you or, end up. It's yeah. where you end up. Yeah, yeah it's where you it's end up. It's almost like you can't separate the path yeah. from yeah. where the path ends. Yeah. That's how it felt. Yeah. Yeah. And so why, why it got to me, you, you were saying that 
you can't operate in the full authority of Jesus if you don't acknowledge the fullness of Jesus. Yeah. And like his if authority. you think and his authority because that's the authority you're working with. That is. It's the his only power. authority you have access yeah. to. Yes. And so if yeah. you don't think that Jesus is king, you you think he's a prophet, you think he's a uh, yeah. Maybe you even just think a man, he's a, a, a son holy of man, God. Wouldn't it? Just a holy man, yeah. Even a nice a holy guy. Man, yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. But if he's not king of the king universe, of king, yeah. you have no right to stand in front of kingdoms of the world and say yeah. Yeah. anything. You have no power. Mm. You have no power. Yeah. And so I was looking at my, even my rant about, you know, like, what am I doing? Like, what's, what's this, the life of a Christian that I'm living? Like, what is the point of yeah, this? I, I want, I want and I was like, yeah. You want more of Jesus, answers. but you don't acknowledge him as, yeah. as, as, as more. Like, but, you're only okay. getting as much as you're seeing but also, Jesus. But also, like, we're measuring, we're measuring, like, our, we're measuring our worth. We said this earlier, didn't we? We're measuring our worth like it's, it's kind of like, where's my return for my sacrifice? That's what we're kind of looking at, yeah. So we're almost like, where's, where's so my... Bad. Yeah, but, where, but where's, my, where's my return? But actually, God's like... You're trying to measure like your your um, actions and things that are happening around you and the fruit that might come from that as a measurement of whether you are really you are in a place of having like um, return like like a return for what you've given. But 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 actually the the thing is, which is what we've been talking about in the prayer meeting, is that. The only return anyone needs, the only thing is that they're in an, they're in an invested relationship with Jesus. And that's the thing that makes us rich. Yeah. That's the thing that makes us fulfilled. That's the yeah. thing that completes us. So the more we invest in that, yeah. the more yeah. complete we are anyway. Yeah. And then we don't really care too much about the actions. Yeah. So you don't worry about like, oh, is this going to work? Or is that going to work? Or like, is this going to go here? Is this going to go here? It's like you'd be like, I'm... I'm I'm just content and, and in my relationship with God. And in that as yeah, well, right. we, don't, we don't need to see. We actually don't need to see all of the wonderful outcomes of our obedience. Yeah. Oh my God. You know, we don't need to yeah. see them. We when, when we get to heaven, when, we, when we're beyond this life, yeah. when we're in heaven, then, then you know, we, we know that people will be able to know what good they did for God during their life. But we don't need to see all of the accolades no. in this life. We don't need accolades. We, we really don't. And I think if we... And think, we shouldn't seek after them either. If, if we just relate that to what God is doing in the church, in, in, at Hillfield's church, which, praise God, he's, he's just... So many people have come to faith. But we have to be very careful how we hold this information. Yeah. We were talking about this earlier, about, yes, we, we could... Even if we don't intend to... We could easily present it as, oh, it could be misread as, oh, you're, you're taking glory for it, or you're not giving right. pride, and you're not giving all glory to God. We, mm-hmm. we, we need to be in that place of complete humility. Um, and, and what do I mean by that? I think it is acknowledging that if no credit ever comes to Hillfield's Church at all whatsoever, right. then we're fine with that, yes. you know, in this life. Yeah. As in, it doesn't matter. It, this isn't for us we're, anyway. We're either be, building the kingdom. That's it. Or we're building an empire for ourselves. Yeah. And, and, and that's yeah. the thing. So what, what about if you're the person that shared the gospel with someone, that shared the gospel with someone, that shared the gospel with someone that ended up being Billy Graham? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. that, that, that's your yeah. part. Yeah. Accept it and receive it. And, and you, might, you will not know that. You, well, you might know it in time, but, but yeah. ultimately you might not know that until eternity. Yeah. But... Like when, when obedience, that's, that's what God will do. Is like you're just a piece, a cog. Uh, yeah. a, well, a we chain. are all, all, all little cogs yeah. in the in in the big plan of God. But when we actually sat down and assessed, okay, what what have we really done? We it's actually very little that we can take glory for anyway. Because when you look at all the individual stories of people contacting the church and just coming along, and like you were talking about, I mean, you, you spent quite a bit talking about this yesterday, Rich, which is really important, is that God has done so much of the work before a person even gets in touch yeah. with the church or comes How in can the we door. Take glory for you can't take any glory. Anything. You can't take any glory for what God is doing here in the way that He's doing it. When you actually assess each of the stories, not so many of them have been like, 
out on the street evangelism. It's been God is doing the evangelism. He's doing a large part of the discipling because we've established the life groups. He's moving by his Holy Spirit on people's lives. And actually, this is a really big deal when we just unpack it. It's not, so we can't actually take glory for these individual yeah. stories. Like you were saying, we're just being here, cutting the grass, making sure that we, we make sure that yes. there is space for God yeah, to move absolutely. with. And but at the heart of all of that is something that we do need to do, which is that just our lives are given over entirely to you, Lord God. So we can be where we need to be. So we can be where we need to be. We're ready. We're ready and we're available, God, for whatever you want to do. It's about you, Lord God. And we have to remind ourselves of this every single day, really, because we can easily fall into the trap. You can take, you can extend that even further, though. Like, um, so even though, like, we talk about being obedient, which is really important, the only reason you want to be obedient is because God put it in you in the first place. Yeah. So it's not even. It's all from God. So anyway. it's not like you've suddenly come, magically come up with this. No. I've got a real heart for people. I've got a real call into music. I I really feel like I I've got a, a heart for the Word of God. Like, you don't want those things. Your flesh wants the opposite. So that's come from your spirit, which is God. So, so there is zero, even the obedience yeah. part of it is still limited to, to the reality of that the fact that you even want to do this thing is being planted by God anyway. Yes. So, so all of it's God. Yeah, all of it's God. The obedience and the partnership with God is on the church. Yeah. You know, that's like any church can do obedience and partnership yeah. with God but, but God moves in that and partnership if more Christians were being obedient you wouldn't look so obedient that's the truth you think about all the people out there like amazing men and women of God that have done great things they've got books like Jackie Bollinger or or you know all these different people that are out there like um uh I can't think there's loads of them um Dave Wilkerson people like that like that have stepped out and done things for God well, if everyone was doing it, no one would really be reading their books. So the truth is, it's like we look at it as being a big deal about obedience. And unfortunately, there is obedience in this church where people did make a decision and did step out. But if everyone was doing it, no one would be looking at our church because they'll be doing it. So the reality of it is, is that, th that, that we tend to gravitate more to the obedience of a person rather than the fact that if you were all walking with Jesus yourself and listening to God yourself, then you would be you would be doing it. You wouldn't be here. You would be there. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so doing it. So I think it's that other side of it as well. Like, like there are callings that are put on people sometimes as like, like a step out, go to China, like Jackie yeah. Pullen, like all that kind of stuff. Her, but, her story. But, there, but God could have been saying that to hundreds of people. Yes. The, rea the reality of it is, is like, it's just like, but only one said yes. Exactly. So, so the yeah. truth is it looks like obedience almost against the grain, but God's like, I asked loads of people. Yeah. I invited tons. I've invited, I'm telling all the ministers out, all the pastors, to to give me the space, to give me back the church. It's not, it's not really obedience to give God His church, is it? It's 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 what we should it's be doing. It's reasonable it's, service. It's, yeah, yeah, it's literally like it's His. Yeah. Yeah. But it's almost but like people, giving you know back what? His I church. Think, okay. I think I think generally speaking that that we've kind of beyond as in the wider context of, of Christians. I think we've forgotten how to how to really do that that can break the mold of the way the status quo and I think I think so when we're honest with ourselves and we totally surrender then and we stick and we persevere in that then God starts to pull all the pieces together and it takes time it takes time to do these things it takes years you know I feel, I feel less when I was going through stuff and having to stand and and it's sort of touched on it a little bit at the end of the message yesterday but when you have to stand through some stuff that said said to you, and then you push on, push on. You see, you talk about that a lot more. As I've got on to where I am today, I'm like, it doesn't really matter. The people I used to talk about a lot as stories, you know, of like this is I had to hear this, I had to do this, like, and you might like regurgitate them over and over and over again because it's like raw and it's right there. Now I'm like, oh, I got stories that were last year, but I don't really talk about that now because. It's, it doesn't matter. Like it, it's, it's, I'm, I'm being where God wants me to be. I'm doing what God wants me to do. And, and so I'm not, it's not so much about you. It's more about how God got you through it. Yeah. And, and it's more about like, well, maybe I guess you could share with people and say like, God can help you through it too. But mainly that's it. That's where it stays. As where like when you're younger and you're starting off and you're thinking it's all going to be great and then there's all this attack, you talk more about that. You talk about, oh man, we had to make a stand. We had to make a stand. We had to... But now I'm like, yeah, we made a stand. 
but look what God's doing. It's cool. Like, look what God's doing. So it's more like about what God is yeah. doing than it is yeah. about the stand. Yeah, we had to make a stand. And if anyone's watching from other churches that are like, how can you get to a place where you see what you're doing, where you got to stand, we can tell them that and tell them how we did it. But ultimately, it's like, yeah. I still have to stand today. Yeah. I just, I just, it, what yeah. God is doing is overriding yeah. that now. And the lessons never stop. No. The expectation is always there that God is going to do more. But if God is going to keep doing more, then there's always lessons that we seem to be learning. Yeah. There's new things, there's new challenges that just weren't there before. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, you can only navigate that when you're in that place of, okay, God, totally over to you. Yeah. <laughs> totally over to you. You know what I'm, I'm seeing, uh, even just going back even to what we were talking about, about the seeing Jesus rightly. I think the experiences that we have had of God in this yeah. church, like I'm learning, I'm learning that God doesn't do things just so he can, just to do things. He doesn't, so he true. doesn't do things even so that we can have a, t you remember when you said that one, one time when you were like, it's not just about you having a testimony. Like he doesn't need us parading him, his name around so that people can, he doesn't need that. Testimony is good. Testimony is oh, important. I'm, please, yeah. I'm not downplaying testimony. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be clipped. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm not downplaying testimony. Testimony yeah. is obviously good. We overcome me. him by the word of our testimony. We overcome yeah. the enemy, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But I think that what I'm learning about what he's doing in this church and even just around us as yeah. children of God is that if you know if you know another layer of his character you start to to become more of that thing oh, man. Do, do you know what i mean yeah. it's like what we're yeah. that is it it's That's like a deeper the answer is to know him yeah. because remember what we were talking about about when you see the fullness of jesus yeah. you start walking yeah. in that authority yeah. well you yeah. see him do something bigger today. Yeah. You see, oh my gosh, God is great. Yes. He's greater than he's greater than this. Next yes. time he's doing something, yes. so that you learn his character again, yeah, and you, the world begins to see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. the point, isn't it? Yeah. I remember we were talking about it with Job. We were talking about Dan Roller's video when he was yeah. talking about shining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. You're so it. focused I on watched like, it. You watched it. Yeah. How yeah. good yeah. So was good that? message. Such like, a good message. Yeah. And I and I thought about how connected it was even to what you started to yeah. say at the end of the message yeah. yesterday. You were talking about destroying self righteousness, yeah. right? Because he was. Um, I wrote this down because it was so good. Destroy self righteousness by focusing on your own personal relationship with God. Repent and God will restore you to friendship with him. Yeah, and yeah. You were talking from um, Reve Revelations yeah. 3 about how Jesus says, you know, I'm yeah. knocking at your door, yeah. right? Yeah. That yeah. he will, when yeah. you change your mind, yeah. he will come in and he will sit down yes. in a table of friendship. Like yeah. yes. now you are that close. Yeah. And the only reason why you are that close is because you're yes. now no longer focusing on what this person has yes. done or what, it's or the darkness yeah. of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're experiencing the light himself. Oh, like yeah, yeah. when you experience the light himself you have no time to think about like think about it like yeah, yeah. the light yeah. that's going to shine yeah. in eternity where where we don't need the sun anymore yeah. that's yes. how powerful Glory this light God. is yeah. can you imagine having yeah. friendship with that light mm -hmm. and you're worried about that's your neighbor like yeah. to me yeah. that is just that's it. that's perspective, so that's it? that's why know him just yeah. just yeah. Let's know him. Yeah, and then, and then, and as you know him, your character aligns with his character. So then, therefore, you don't act as your flesh wants to. You act as your spirit does, which then means you don't you don't put your eyes on the things that were bothering you as much. So it's just it's and it, and it and it's and the thing is, it's learning this all the time. It's learning this all the time because we're always going to have these moments where the enemy is going to put bring the temptations to, to draw ourselves into the flesh and operate under the flesh, and that, that we try and justify our means by righteous anger or something like something silly like that, when really it's like, but actually if we're aligning with the spirit, and this is what I'm learning, I'm learning with people is that actually, as I walk with God and as I go on with God, and I actually look at what God is, character is and what he thinks and how he feels and what, what he shows me and what he's shown me personally, then I kind of like operate from that place rather from than from the place yeah. of the flesh or how I'm feeling or what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Then I'm s I can drop an offense so quickly yeah. because I'm just like oh oh yeah because I'm dr I'm driven by his character for that person rather than my character for that person. Yeah. Oh, and so uh, so understanding that and I think 
that's why we've always got to be learning to get more in the spirit less in the flesh learn about who he is and 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 undo and un, un, um, decrease the power of the flesh yeah. in your life and increase the power of the spirit in your life and as you and as you do that it changes things and i love the thing is the thing i emphasize about the message i stay with that revelation free is that the sensationalism of christianity is that we would we do, you think about it there's and, 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 I'm, and I'm, I'm going to be really neutral here right so we could talk about people that are extreme that will talk about lukewarmness but we can also talk about the people that will only talk about jesus standing at the door and knocking yeah. so let, let's get the balance here right yeah. Yeah. so so yeah. like so if i was to share that scripture oh jesus stands at the door and knocks yeah. and if i was to share oh uh, you are lukewarm and the lord wants yeah. to you would never think that those two are connected right. because right. they're never preached they're together never, never. they're never preached together no, they're only preached yeah. separate they are. but that but they were written by jesus together they weren't written separate they weren't two different letters they're written they're together. together they're written only to that one yeah. church and and, and so this church that like i said right at the beginning built it up i heard everyone ooh, and everyone go oh, yeah i wouldn't want to be that church everyone was aware everyone knew we don't want to be that church no way amen you don't want to be that church and then you're like, okay, so you don't want Jesus knocking at your door? Yes. So the truth is, is the that... The restoration is always The there. restoration yeah, that goes alongside what there. people were associating as the worst of the worst. And yeah. is that, look at what God is offering us wow. all the time, yeah. even though we've lowered him. Even though we've made him less. He's literally saying, I know what you've done, yes. but I'm knocking. Yeah. So n let me in, to change your mind, back that up. repent, that character of God. turn, yeah. come so back like to me. You can't change yeah. anyway until you see yeah. me rightly. Yeah. So you need me yeah. in order yeah. to, <laughs> you yeah. can't separate. Wow, yeah. that's so good. And that's the gospel. Yeah. That's the gospel. The gospel yeah. is, the gospel is, like Ian did a great message on it. The good news, the bad news and the good news. Yeah. It's that truth. It's like, there is bad news, but that's, a, that's the, the less words. It's the less verses. Yes. The yes. good news is more verses. Yeah. The good news, which is the redemption story, the come to me, yeah. turn, Lord, turn to me, and, and, that's and I will come and dine with you. Together. And yeah. he's like, I, I had this picture, like, you know, when he writes that, and he's like, it's like almost like you're, he's saying, come and sit on my knee, on my throne, yeah. Yeah. like I did with my that's, father. That's like, that's what he's saying to the worst church, to the worst church, to the, the one that everyone wants to say, oh, this is he the church He doesn't say that world. to anyone else. No. He doesn't say that to any of the other six churches. That's the redemptive arc. It's just saying, He's not guys, saying like, let's do let's do slowly yeah. and earn your way yeah, yeah. into my life. Yeah. No, no, no. You yeah. saying repent. Yeah. If you have me, you've yeah. got the closeness yeah. immediately. Yeah. yeah. But this is yeah. this is the prodigal son. Now. 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 This is Open the door now. Yeah. <laughs> this is you know this is exactly the heart of God. Yeah. And and that's where you have to hold these two things together, the character yeah. of God. You know this is. This is how God moves and holds things together. If you're only on the bad news, then you're just going to repel, repel, yeah. repel, repel, and, you're gonna and judge. You're going to be miserable. You're going to be judging yeah. everybody left, and right, and you judge center. yourself. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I if you're, think you're the first victim, aren't you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Because, yes. but the thing is, there's two ways it goes. You either are miserable because you're judging yourself the same way, or you're self-righteous because for you to become a judge means that you have to think that you're pure and spotless yeah and, and you also think that you're the one that needs to kind of set everybody free correct. yeah wow. and right. become the savior yeah um and, and there's only one savior exactly wow. there's only one savior he doesn't wow. he is jesus and he that's what i said that's what i was saying about the, the message i got wasn't it when he's like we're meant to die and i was oh, like yeah. no we're meant to live <laughs> <laughs> like like why are you telling people that they can have new life in christ because the bible says it like no we're meant to die in christ we're meant to die and it's like yeah we're meant to we're meant to change we're meant to we're meant to not no longer live for ourselves yeah but i'm living and of course and of course we're living the flip side of this <laughs> it's miserable the flip side yeah absolutely the flip side to only focusing on the bad is to only focus on the good news yeah. and if you only focus on the good news without actually exploring the stuff that Jesus actually came to deal with, folks, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he died because of the problem with yeah, sin in the world, yeah. then you're just going to compromise. Yeah. You're going to compromise on Well, you're trying to die, you're trying to die you're, for something that Jesus lowering, already died for. You're lowering Jesus, and you actually start to yeah. point to someone who is not Jesus. Yeah. Right. And right. you've actually made something else an idol, mm. which doesn't put you in a very good place no, either. No, not at all. Right. So and you're, and you're, you're trying to say, I, I, I need to die. Right. Yeah. Which means, what? Well, so Jesus... Jesus did that, yeah, thankfully, but that, that's the truth, isn't it? You're trying to say, I, I, oh no, I need to. Yeah. So you, now you're creating a gospel or a, a doctrine or teaching 
that's almost along, along the lines of I am, I am showing. I, I'm saying that no, I have to. I have to. When really it's like you don't have to anything. It's a free gift, Jesus, and you need to own struggle, that free gift. Know, yeah. I actually think that that's why we struggle. You know, I, I've been. Um, sort of working through some things, you know, talking to younger people as well yeah. Yeah. who are in the Lord, you know, and they're trying to make sense of things that I was looking at thinking, oh, basic Christianity, I've got that down. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the basics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, then, uh -oh. and then I realized, you know, sometimes we, like, we think that Christianity is like a, is like, we're, we're, it's a striving thing like a, and when you get to a place where your and salvation is a striving like yeah then yeah. I think you're doing it wrong because yeah. you you ought yeah. to be living from a place of freedom and not yes. and not living yeah. to try and get freedom yeah. you know the, those yeah. are two totally different yeah. things mm. and I think mm. when you start to understand yeah. Jesus as he yeah. really is yeah. you're number one you don't stay the same yeah. like you always say yeah. like you, you don't stay the same because yeah. you understand that actually this sacrifice Jesus gave was necessary yeah. like it's come not as you like are don't stay as yeah. you are isn't yeah. it? you know it's yeah, like absolutely. it's not like he's saying that like oh I, I just did that for fun going to the cross you know yeah. there was actually a really really deep yeah deep yeah. issue there yeah but also I really do mean it when I say that I love you and that yeah. there's grace for yes. you. And so like, oh, that's I'm another learning really good that point like, about the grace. Yeah, yeah. I'm really yeah. learning that like, when, when he says in Philippians, you know, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, it's a not strive yeah. for this salvation. That's not yeah. what he means yeah. when he's saying that. Yeah. But it's We're like, called to persevere and run the race. I, 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 yeah. I, uh, I've understood that every time that, I, that I've done the will of the Father, knowing that it's his strength working in me. Yes. I, you know that sweet spot that I'm yeah. talking about. You, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a grace in it that yeah. is so beautiful. Oh, that is and there's it. an yeah. ease to it too, yes. because it's not so, your strength. So do you, you know the so difference. You're, so you're saying in a way like, um, if, we're, if we're too heavy in a way, like it, mm. it's particularly for new people coming in, if we're yeah. too heavy, like obviously, we have to emphasize the cross, like what God, Jesus, and the done. importance of yeah. sin and repentance, and, and, and all those things are really important, really, really important yeah. stuff. But, but if we're too heavy with emphasizing what Jesus did, when really He did it, like are you saying, grace isn't enough? Yeah, like, 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 like enough? if we emphasize how much He did, it's almost like we become unworthy all over again to to even carry the cross, because how could we how could we even associate ourselves with such a sacrifice, which means you then don't live, which is why you get these things like, we know we're meant to die. We're meant to die with him. Like that's what we're meant to do. And it's like, actually what, you, what, you, what you're realizing is, but what you're doing is it's almost like a reverse psychology thing that you're doing, which is like almost like, oh, I've got the free gift of the cross, right? Okay. And then you receive it. And then what you do is you go, oh, the cross, I've read about it, it's so bad. And I've seen the passion and I've seen all these things. It's so bad. I feel so unworthy of it now. And it's almost like rather than it being like, yeah, there's a, there's a way of watching that or reading that and realizing, man, like, man, I feel like Jesus took yeah. my place. And I, and I, you know, you can sometimes be you can angry. Stay in the, you can stay in the place of suffering. Yeah, but you, when but he you, suffered yeah, for a literally, reason, literally, you, you stay you in the place of the reason. Yeah. You don't get to the reason bit, yeah. but you just stay in the suffering. Like Jesus, the suffering was of a point in time. Yeah. So why would you keep going back to that point yeah. in time? Absolutely. Acknowledge, acknowledge Jesus that suffering was, yeah. was necessary. Because he didn't yeah. die on the cross. But he had to suffer. To, he had to, to suffer. Stay there, so we have to acknowledge that. Yeah. But if we stay in that same place, then you just can never really press on to the reason why he suffered. Yeah. You know, yeah. that he's, that but, he's but, actually lifted us out. He's, he, we are crucified with him and we no longer live, but we, he lives yeah. in us. Yeah, that's it. It's the life of Jesus yeah. Christ in us. It's only done through his suffering. But also, the like, if you look at the, the if you look at the temple, like we've done, I've done this teaching before, but if you go through the temple, it's like the, uh, the gate is the, like, the salvation. It's the walking through. It's the beginning. It's opening the door to God. Yeah. The cross is the receiving of the, the work of the cross so that your, your price is paid. And then there's the Holy of Holies, which is, so Jesus tore the veil, not for you to stay at the altar. Yes. He, he tore the veil so you could walk into the presence in. of the Father and to receive the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think it's understanding that, like, 
if you don't have the victory of being able to know that you can walk boldly, which is scripture says, boldly into the throne room of God, because now you are being cleansed with the righteousness of Christ and paid for by his blood, not yours, not your death, not what you've done, but by what he's done, then you walk boldly and then you own it. You yeah. own, own your faith. Yeah. So then you get there and you go, man, no, I'm owning this faith. So actually, I'm going to enjoy my walk with Jesus, not be miserable by it. I, un I know the altar's there, and I will visit the altar sometimes, and I will remember the altar sometimes. Yeah. But I'm not living at the altar, because guess what? I went there, and Jesus isn't there either. It's Jesus right. is not there either. <laughs> Jesus isn't on the altar. He's not still on the cross. Nope. He's not there. He's gone. He's walked away from it. He came off of the cross, and he's not even in the grave that they put him in because well, of the cross. It. So he's not yeah. there anymore. So even though we remember him, which is what he asks us to do, he doesn't say, sit here and dwell and wallow and feel sorry for yourself and mope about it. Like, remember I what it. I've done. I don't want to go back. Why do you want to yeah. go back? Yeah, remember what I've done. But, but what did he do? He didn't just die. He's saying, remember what I've done. Yeah. So what he's saying, remember what I've done, which is also, I rose from the dead. Yeah. Right. I defeated death. Yes. And I've given you life. And if you read scripture, I've been reading a lot more scripture recently regarding like how to come to Jesus. If you read a few passages, I, I can't think of them now, but they, they, they talk about your walk with God now. So it says Jesus died. This is what scripture says. It says like Jesus died so that you can walk in your purpose. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it says. Like on this earth through works. So it's not even like the purpose of salvation. Just it means like your works like you so that he can instill works into you. So it's we were born created to not only just be saved and be like well let's just get through to the end yeah. it's it's actually yeah. so that we can fulfill and appreciate this. all the the great things which yeah. there is incredible things about you know giving your life to jesus the, the richness of life and all the benefits yeah. the wonderful benefits that we have that closeness and intimacy with god and his hand of favor upon our lives yeah. when we're walking with him effectively um, but it's actually kind of pressing on, isn't it? It's pressing on to, okay, God's got work to do. We've got responsibilities to walk into, and those will happen naturally if we just keep our eyes on him. And I think as well, you know, um, uh, what was I going to say? About the, the power, the power of God that you start to realize when you move on from the place of moping in the suffering. And you go into the place where, oh no, Jesus has risen from the dead. That's the power. And he's given us everything that is available to us, the Holy Spirit and everything else that comes with it. You, you, start, like, operating it in the, you start operating in the power and the true grace of God upon you. Because you cannot take, if you're in the place of suffering, it's very hard to take hold of the grace. Yeah. And so, but yeah. if but the power is in the grace of God. But we're we're not meant to be in the place of suffering. Jesus suffered. Yeah, do you understand? Like that's <laughs> yeah, the that's thing. It. So like, why are we trying to replicate something that he did? It means that we're trying to become like him. We're trying to be like do his job for 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 him. He's done it. He you said can it almost finished. Imagine so Jesus looking at us, going. What, I've done this. Trying to do this again. I've done this. Like get out of your get out of your pit. Get out it's of that like, place. Like I suffered. Yes acknowledge that acknowledge that that's happened remember that i've done it but actually don't sit in it i'm not even sitting in it like so don't sit in it so i think it's just that it's such an important and you understand then that's why you get christians that are miserable you get christians that are like like I, like a long long time ago when me and claire 20 years ago we came here and then we put a proposal out for the youth work and i said i want to instill a ministry with young people that they would know that jesus is fun and and one of the leaders was like fun i don't think jesus is fun i don't think dying on the cross is fun and i was like you've stopped at the cross like you don't know about the resurrection power of god that that resurrects us that brings us into and new the life joy, that saves us the joy of being in yeah, the lord the joy of the salvation yeah, yeah so, so we, we can have fun the joy of being so, in the lord so it's just that's that reality why we celebrate and praise yeah, god yeah, yeah. like in rejoicing so i was like you know and the then i was like lord why have you brought me here again the psalms, got, <laughs> the psalms has got tons of like <laughs> yeah. joyful yeah. outpouring yeah. of just like praising god yeah. so so don't step back into your grave I yeah. think a lot yeah. of it is ignorance, isn't yeah. it, really, at this point? Like, yeah. where it's like, do you know God? But, do you know his word? But going back to what well, you that's, said. That's a massive but, point. I think, but going back to what you said, I, I wonder, the more I'm thinking about, like you were saying about some of the, the people you were chatting to and, mm. and like your own thoughts and, yeah. and also this person that a long time ago, I wonder if it's an excuse. I wonder if it's, if it's, it's like, if I stay in the suffering of Christ and act like I'm not worthy to carry his cross, then actually, then actually, then actually maybe then, then I don't have to do anything else. I can, I can come to church and beat myself up and feel, feel bad about who I am and how 
but actually I never I never get to walk in the victory. I never get to walk in the victory, but That's I'm not worthy tragedy. of the victory. Like, so close. But it's almost it's like, like a mentality reality. to say because I don't I I I'm comfortable too. I'm yeah. comfortable with this way of thinking about myself. I'm comfortable with this way of thinking about God. Yeah. That he's a God that's beating me down. Yeah. That I'm a, I'm a person yeah. that can beat myself down. But rather than living in the victory. There's such a massive issue with that. You know, like in, in the fallen world, someone sins, someone's bad to us. We, we develop coping mechanisms yeah. against what is evil and wrong and bad. And that God doesn't want us to be in that place. We have coping mechanisms which often turn into strongholds that ultimately yeah. can be, need to be broken yeah. to have a flourishing relationship with God. But what you're saying is the inverse of that. You're actually developing a coping mechanism against going on with oh, God. Yeah. So, so what are you doing? It's, it's like, like an excuse, excuse isn't it, I, to say, I, I'll stay yeah, here. That's almost it. like you're, you're almost yeah. like, oh, um, and, this is, but, my, but this is the cards I've been dealt. But what, this is the God calling God's given me. It's like, yeah. but what, you're not an you, exception to what the, you just said to as the well. it is finished. <laughs> but beforehand, you just Apart said something, which is just like really keying into what you took it further, which I think is that I think there is lots of believers in this in this place, which is, which is tragic because then, okay, you know, we talk about, can I talk about baptism quickly? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because baptism often, you know, is culturally, people often think, oh, they get saved. Then they've got to do a, a lot more work before they get to the point of where they can even oh, consider yeah. baptism. Um, and, you know, we've talked about this quite a bit before. But actually, you know, if you actually go back to what it says about baptism in, in the Bible, you know, there's not all this extra baggage that you feel that you need to deal with. So stop jumping back to the place of before you were saved. Actually, Jesus Christ has done it when you're saved and you understand what baptism is. So long as you understand what baptism is and, and the meaning of yeah, it, yeah, yeah. then you're, you're, you're ready to be baptized. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you're, and you, you, you're committed to, to following through with, yeah. with serving God in your life. Yeah. Um, salvation is, is an initial step, but if you really meant it, yeah. then, and there is, there is work that God is doing on your life, then, then when you get baptized, you're, you're being obedient to what yeah. the Bible says you should be doing. It's not, it's not a requirement for you to have salvation. That's the point of yeah. giving your life but, to but Jesus. It, but it's obedience to salvation. So like that, which Jesus did. So like Jesus did baptism as obedience to God. So we should be doing it as obedience to, as if it was a, 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 a a commandment like yeah. so like if you can't do it because you're in a hospital bed or you yeah. you can't move that like yeah. god there's grace yeah. but if, if you can yeah. you should but we found but we found as well yeah. but while you're looking for that but we, we found that people come in with this baggage about baptism yeah. and it prevents them from getting baptized yeah. so they they feel they can never really get baptized because they never really got to a certain set a standard that they feel they have to going back to what we we're talking about earlier about attaining trying to attain to a yeah. certain level we were talking about that earlier yeah. And so, no, Jesus Christ has done everything on the cross. So get over yourself. And, you know, then, and, and people, when, they, when people realize that, they jump in, yeah. jump in the pool and they're like, wow, God's then, and because they've done that outward expression yeah. of, you know, that, that going down under the water and then coming back up again, you know, being reborn, yeah. then, that, then God does even more powerful things in their lives. I think that what we've done sometimes, us older Christians, is that we've limited the experiences of new believers because it's almost like what what they see us live is the cap they yeah. don't know that there's more yeah you know and so it's like well uh, the the god that you know is you've limitless. limited him he's to, limitless he's just the, yeah do you know what i mean and we've and, limited and, and we've told yeah. we've told people that this is all this is as far as you can really go with yeah. god yes. and yet he's bigger than no, he's it's way bigger than we can possibly I'm getting, imagine. I'm get, you know, I'm like I th we feel like God's only just started with what he's them. doing in our church. Well, I want to share this. So I, read, I found this yeah. scripture um, when Peter talks about um, he's preached the gospel and he to the guys uh, in Acts two, and it says, as Peter replied, "Each of you must repent." We were asking this earlier. What, what should we do? Yeah. So they heard it. They heard what they did. They found that they were far away from God. Peter says, as each of you must repent of your sins, turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Mm -hmm. So that's what he says. Like, what should we do? This is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. So those are the things you need to do. Now, he doesn't say each of you must repent of your sins, turn to God, and in a few weeks' time, after we've done some work with you, we'll be baptized. <laughs> yeah, that's the first. So he says, do these things together. Do these things together. Repent of your sins, turn to God, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. This is the best bit because this is what we're seeing in our church. Mm -hmm. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, so there's a difference between someone praying a prayer of salvation 
and someone making a public declaration yeah. to be baptized because that's what Peter is saying here. Yeah. When you make when you make a decision to repent of your sins, yeah. like which is when people put their hands up, which is brilliant, but it, when you are baptized, it says you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it says this promise is to you and to your children and even to the Gentiles. So that's the other thing we're seeing in the church now. So if you think about the move of God that's happening, which we can't work out. I didn't know this scripture before God started doing it in our church. I didn't know it was written this way. I didn't remember, I didn't remember reading it like this. So, so you think, oh, God, what are you doing? I don't understand. People are just coming to the Lord. And then we're seeing the power of the Holy Spirit fall upon people that are then making uh, the public declaration of, 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 of getting baptized. Yeah. Something is transforming them when that happens. Not yeah, And God is like endorsing them like he, the Father did with Jesus. He's the same thing. The Holy Spirit falls. And then, and then we're seeing what? Their families coming to the Lord. Because it's th it's, it, this promise is to you and your family. So why? So when we're saying oh, I can't work it out, people are like I don't get it. It's all a bit weird to me. It's like, well, no, but it is in the Bible. And so when people come to Jesus, and when people respond to Jesus, and when people make public declarations, it says the Holy Spirit will fall. That's what Peter says. And also we see that in the depiction when Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit came. So we know that's the thing. Even though we haven't really got into this, that's the doctrine we teach or anything like that. It's just there's something that if you are genuine about that decision. Something's going to change. Something's going to happen. And then your family's going to be impacted. So on Friday, we got to, Friday we got to baptize Reese. But how did Reese come to the Lord? Oh, hang on a minute. Because Megan and uh, what's, uh, Tony came to the Lord. So they came to the Lord, got baptized. And what happens? Reese follows. Why? Because it's in the promise. This is a promise to you and to your children. So we shouldn't be shocked that someone like Reese, who has never gone to church, is suddenly going, I think I want to do this too. Yeah. Not that long after, he's just started going to church. And with it's his, not because he dad. thinks it looks cool yeah. and because everyone gets around the pool and claps. It's yeah. like, no, God, you can see God's the doing the heart of the person. In, in yeah. the person. He's like sincere in, yeah. in that dedicated heart towards God and, and response. Yeah. So, and this is the case for so many different people as well, where God's been moving. I, just, so I think, I think, I think it's that, 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 like we say, we... I don't even know if we've really talked about the message, but but basically the understanding of it really is ultimately to say like God's called us. We didn't call him and, and, and all we need to do is answer the call. Like we just need to answer the call, whatever that call is, whether it's the call to salvation or the call to obedience, just answer the call and, 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 and he will move and he will meet with you and he will dine with you and he will, he will pour out promises for your future. Like that's what, what he does. So I think, I think understanding, I think as we go forward, like just to, just to realize, and obviously we go into part two, but to realize as we're going into part two, first of all, you were called before you could even answer Like God set you aside. So we also have to have the same mentality, which is a big thing I emphasized yesterday that everyone that's walking through those doors has gone through a journey yeah. and they've been called by God at the beginning beginning of time. Before time began is actually what scripture says. Yeah. So so before time began, God's put things in place. He chose us. He's called us. Yeah. So we can't get in the way of someone's calling and someone's yeah. someone's being chosen. We can yeah. actually get in the way, but but we shouldn't be getting in the way. We gotta learn like God, I don't want to be somebody that's causing a young person yeah. to stumble in their walk with you. Help me to see the people that you're sending through the doors yeah. with your eyes yeah. so that when I see them, I see your heart. I feel your heart for them. Yeah. And when I see them respond, I am rejoicing, not scrutinizing, yeah. not yeah. cynicism, yeah. but just rejoicing that one sinner has repented. Yeah. And that's what, and that's what uh, the heaven rejoices yeah. because of that. And we should yeah. be rejoicing because of it. Yeah. And God has entrusted that yeah. to us. So yeah. it's a really important part going yeah. forward. And then obviously just to kind of give you an insight into next week. We're just gonna look at Moses, but we're actually gonna look at where it went wrong for Moses mm. and how we need to learn from that. Mm. And that's what we're gonna look at because that's the really a really key part with the only way that God will continue to work in this church is if we stay obedient to his voice rather than the voices of others. Mm. And um, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to say something. Well. Yeah, uh, there's something that I've learned even in this conversation just hearing you guys speak that I, I really felt needed to, I needed to highlight, which is that um, don't allow the outcomes or lack of outcomes yeah. 
to stop you from obeying God. Yeah. Yes. Because Amen. like you were saying, like that really, that really touched me, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah. for sharing that. Yeah. Because I think that was, I fell victim to that, where yeah. I'm not seeing certain outcomes yeah. that I am expecting. Yeah. And so therefore, yeah. Uh, that should not have a yeah. say in whether yeah. whether we obey God yeah. or not. You, because ultimately, the outcomes are probably are going to look yeah. nothing like what I expect, Absolutely, but they yeah. will be there because it's God. He yes. never wastes yes. anything. You'll right? be, but you'll be more satisfied with outcomes if you're satisfied with your relationship with God. That's it. And also, God weaves in things that we can't possibly second guess. Like So, so when we second guess God, actually, we're limiting God. Um, and, but when we're just like, hey, God, whatever you want to do, I'm not going to expect what you want. Yeah. Then he's shown that not only does he go and do amazing things, but he starts to yes. bring many things intertwined together where he's like this tapestry and coming together. The things that we even wanted to see, the way we wanted to see them, actually sometimes do come to pass, just yeah. not the way, yeah. not in the timing yeah. that we wanted and in, yeah. in the way that we thought it would. Yeah. And there's, not, there's no ignorance or laziness in this we're intentionally getting out the way and fixing our eyes on Jesus. <laughs> well, we're actually you following know? scripture, which is like, following, wait, following wait on me, yeah. stand still. Yeah. Like it's, I think as well, to, to sum up a lot of the things do, we've been yeah. talking about in just a really quick phrase, I think um, uh, recognizing the obstacles in ourselves and letting God deal with them and making sure that, that we remove any other obstacles to God being able to move in a church. Yeah. Um, it's, it's about dealing with those obstacles and that all you can overcome all of those things when you surrender and fix your eyes on Jesus and just do it his way mm. but I love how that impacted you Vara about about dealing with our expectations of what God should be doing yeah. you should think not have by any now, expectations right? I'd be so, I'd, I'd, I'd be a yeah. little bit more yeah. I just think, I don't know. The, the more God does the less expectations we've learned to have do you know what though I think like I think that might, like you're saying there like it should be this we can all be we can all be better. We can all have done better and we could have all of whatever. I'm sure there's lots yeah. of regret. But but I love the fact that I just see with God and I just think, do you know what? In the last seven years, I've been more obedient to God. Okay. But I haven't been fully obedient okay. to God. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I like, so like understanding like, yeah, okay, I've stepped okay. out to, I've stepped out and I've done more. That like maybe, like I said, if everyone was doing it, I wouldn't, no one would even notice I was right. doing it. Right. It's just because sometimes you're doing something, aren't you? That then... Everyone's like, that's really weird and radical. And it's like, I, okay, but I've, but actually, if you really knew my life, like, like, do you know what I mean? So to ultimately, yeah. we can still be in those places where we can be obedient to God, but not fully obedient yeah. to God. Yeah. And, but we, because we're the only ones being obedient, it looks, it looks like, like you're some kind of holy man or you're doing something and great. And because of how so, gracious God yeah. is, okay. he still deals so, so with So your comparison should never disciples. be with, with like, you don't know what, what people are being obedient with and not being obedient yeah. with and, and what they are listening to God. So even though I can sit here and say, we need to be yeah. obedient to God, that's the truth, that's a yeah. true statement. Yeah. The ultimate thing is, is that like, if I'm being honest, yeah. I'm being obedient in areas of my life, but not in all areas of my life. Well, and I'm learning how to yeah. work with those other areas, but, but I'm not sure when they're gonna get sorted out. You know? God sees the heart. He sees your heart. If, if you're genuinely, your heart is to obey, to want to obey, and you do everything that you can do to obey, mm. whether you're, you're obedient 100% of the time, well, we're all imperfect. Yeah. So that's yeah. just, it's not, never gonna it's, be true. It took me probably a decade, 15 years to even learn how to pray Father. Do you know what I mean? Because, because like, cause there was stuff going on in my life. So, so I could pray, I could pray, I could pray like Father, like pray in my message, in my prayers, but not really directing to him. Does that make sense? So I pr religiously, but not necessarily personally. Yeah. And it wasn't like till it got to a point where I just started to realize like the father, that's who Jesus is telling me to pray to. He's not telling me to pray to him. He's telling me to pray to the father. Yeah. Like I learned like, oh man, am I, even my prayers are being backwards. Like, what? do you know what I mean? Like God's okay. He's got this amazing filter. So if anyone's there going like, have I prayed okay? Have I given the right? Yeah. God's got this amazing right. thing. It's not really real, but I'm just saying. <laughs> He's got this thing that when your prayers go up, it just, it translates. Okay, correctly. So, so you don't need to worry about what coming out because he sees your heart and he knows how, what's really, what you're really trying to say. So you don't need to worry about if you're saying Jesus, Holy Spirit, a hundred times in a prayer or Father or not or whatever. And like, okay, I'll throw Father in just in case I don't want to, I want to make sure it gets listened to. Get to the right place. Yeah, like, the right yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, but actually as you make it, it was because I do, I wasn't making it personal. So I, I knew a personal God, I knew a personal savior but I hadn't quite understood the personal father. 
And so when I started to grow a bit more in my faith and I started to direct my prayers, like I'm praying to the Father yeah. Yeah. and I'm talking to the Father and I'm speaking to him through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit and understand that dynamic, mm -hmm. then I'd start speaking to the Father like Jesus taught me to rather than talking to Jesus too much. Like I talk to Jesus still, but what I mean is like, it's a different dynamic. It's a different dynamic. So, but whereas it all gets bundled in. So once I learned that, then I was like, man, I understand Father now. I understand who he is, who, who, the, who Father God is. Like, but it took me a while. So it didn't mean that I was disqualified from my faith for the 15 years previous. Like, sorry, you got it all wrong. If you died that day, like you would have gone to hell. It, it was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it, because it's a journey. God's taking you on a journey. And he, he's like, I will reveal these things to you at the right time. And then maybe other areas of my life previous to that, he was like, I'm going to deal with this first. I'm going to deal with this first. The farther thing we will get to. Do you know what I mean? Like, whatever. So I think just learning those things, like, like I, can, I'm, I can be a pastor of a church, but I'm also like a novice. I'm still learning. I'm still working through things. And I have been working through those things maybe more predominantly and more regularly in, in recent years than I had previously. Mm. So if someone's getting saved and they've been in there a year, we don't need to be on their backs about how far away they haven't got this right or prayed the right thing or do the right yeah, thing. Because yeah. to me, it's like, let God lead them, they'll get there. You know, like, let God lead them, they'll get there. Because, yeah. like, that's how God's got me where I am. It's the, I meant what I, what I said when I invited him into my life. I meant what I said when I got baptized. He moved in. So I think just just yeah just realizing that as well like where you might get beat yourself up a bit about like I should be shouldn't be here at this point it's like well fine change now but don't beat yourself up too much because maybe God just brought you to this point to say right. let's not be like that anymore right. Right. like today now you're strong enough to deal with it yeah. now you can hear hear me and you're willing to receive it you know we should never yeah. do the enemy slapping for him yeah you know. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that's, that's a t-shirt. That so that's a t-shirt right there. <laughs> yes. That's a t-shirt oh right there. Should I get you one with yeah, that yeah. printed yes, on? Please. Okay, right. <laughs> okay, on that note, we're going to say goodbye. I think we've been talking for ages. But, um, but yeah, we just want to say um, God bless. Um, we're going to get into part two of this message next week. Um, also, please like, share, subscribe. And there are loads of events coming up. So just get on, look on our website, get on the events. There's things coming up for couples. If you're a volunteer in the church, sign up for that. There's, um, there's a few other things for youth coming up. There's also going to be some other things that we're going to be doing, like a conference weekend that's coming up soon. So yeah, singles, no. singles that's up to you. That's up to you. So, Vara will sort out the zinc. So Vara will sort out the single <laughs> stuff for obvious reasons. Okay, right. I'm we'll looking see you later. forward to the conference. Ah, anyway, yeah. yeah. Whatever. God bless. <laughs> Take care. Bye.